the steam locomotive is fast disappearing from British railways and railways of the world. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain, steam has played an important part in the nation's economy. Now, a new revolution, the introduction of electric and diesel power, is resulting in British Railways emerging as one of the world's most modern and highly developed land transport systems. These locomotives, built for Eastern Region, have an excellent record for reliability and service, which has gained repeated orders. And well over 200 of this design are already in operation. The largest fleet of a single type of locomotive in use on British railways today. They're built within the Hawker Sidley Group at the Falcon Works, Loughborough. Also under the same roof, skilled engineers are engaged in the manufacture of electrical equipment for all branches of industry. Brush have long associations with railway engineering. For many years their name has been coupled with reliability and service for motive power all over the world. The power unit is a 1,600 horsepower diesel engine directly coupled to a brush built generator. This unit provides the current for the four traction motors. The 12-cylinder V engine, built by Merley's Bickerton and Day Limited, develops 1,600 brake horsepower at 950 revolutions per minute. Features of the engine include an induction-hardened crankshaft and copper lead bearing. The engine exhaust gas turbocharger is built by the Hawker Sidley Brush Turbine Company. The locomotive superstructure is a fabricated framework of steel angle and sections accurately welded together on jigs. All welded joints are inspected cleaned and painted before the panels are fixed. The driver's cabs are lined and insulated. Pre-assembly of completed body sides, roof sections and cabs on an underframe jig ensures accurate alignment when they're presented to the locomotive underframe. Fitting completed, the whole superstructure is transported to the erection shop. Underframes mounted on stands are first made ready for assembly of equipment and superstructure. The generator is mounted on an extension of the engine bed plate and the power unit does not rely on the underframe for rigidity. The whole unit is flexibly mounted on four rubber pads. Rubber buffers are also fitted at each end to cushion longitudinal shocks. Body sides are now positioned as part of the steady build-up of equipment. An early item to be fitted is the control cubicle containing the automatic load control devices, all contactors and relays. Exhausters for the vacuum brake system and blowers for cooling the traction motors are accessibly positioned for ease of servicing. A roof-mounted fan, mechanically driven from the engine, draws cooling air through the radiators mounted in the body sides.
Bogey units are Commonwealth's one-piece steel castings carrying the weight of the locomotive body on swung and sprung bolsters. Roller-bearing axle boxes are fitted and manganese steel liners are provided on all wearing faces. Outer driving axles are fitted with roller-bearing suspension tubes to carry the traction motors. The drive is taken through a resilient gear wheel on the axle which isolates gear teeth from track shocks. Before wheeling, the four traction motors are bolted onto the tubes. Self-lubricating liners are fitted to the bogey pivot centers. Wheeling is the final stage of erection and the completed superstructure, weighing 64 tons, is gently lowered onto the bogey centers and all necessary connections are made. After wheeling, the locomotive undergoes exhaustive testing, including a high voltage test of all electrical equipment. Air and vacuum brake equipment is completely checked and valves adjusted. These locomotives can be operated together or with other types in twos or threes. And a simulation check for multiple unit working is made on a test board. Before attempting to start the power unit, a final check of crankshaft alignment is made. For the engine load test, the generator is connected to an external resistance. Engine loading is accurately checked the automatic load control system is set and the locomotive is ready to make its first run under its own power. Out on the test track, all running clearances are checked on a curve set to the minimum radius found in service. The locomotive is driven into the paint shop. A rigid and comprehensive painting specification involving six separate coats of paint is met. When finished, the gleaming locomotive is handed over to a British Railways crew to begin its working life. Inside the cab, the driver inserts the master key, unlocking the controller and selecting engine only position. This establishes feed to the driver's warning lights and engine starting is by motoring the main generator from the batteries. With dead man's pedal depressed, brakes released, the selector in forward position and the power handle moved into first notch, the locomotive draws away to an easy start. As the power handle is advanced to third notch, the automatic load control system comes into operation. In design, the emphasis is on simplicity and safety of operation. Should the driver remove his foot from the dead man's pedal, power is cut off and emergency braking occurs. For maintenance, 
the utmost effort has been made to make all parts requiring attention readily accessible. Roof hatches above the cylinder heads give full access for tappet adjustments or injector removal. Quick release doors cover fuel pump and camshaft compartments. Inspection of the commutator and brush gear of the generator is an easy operation. So is inspection of the controller contacts. By removing the housing, contacts are readily cleaned and checked. Much thought has been given to circuit wiring. Terminal boards are well sighted. Every wire is tagged and numbered for identification. In the event of electrical fault, the driver receives warning. The fault can be quickly traced by inspecting indicator lights on the control cubicle. Cooling air for the generator and traction motors is filtered by oil-wetted metal filters accessible from the outside of the locomotive. The main lubricating oil filters for the diesel engine are of the top service type. Batteries call for frequent inspection. Ample clearance is provided for checking electrolyte levels or specific gravity testing. The bogies are entirely grease lubricated. With no oil lubrication, all fire risks are removed. Ease of fueling has also been borne in mind. Plainly marked filler and drain couplings are situated at rail level on both sides of the locomotive. The high-speed fueling equipment employed at this depot fills the 500-gallon tank at the rate of one gallon per second. The tireless diesel locomotives have to work round the clock, hauling crack expresses and freight trains throughout the eastern region. of mainline diesel-electric locomotives is carrying out more efficiently the work once done by several times the number of steam locomotives. of their work are the boat trains from Liverpool Street to Harwich. Running twice a day, they transport thousands of passengers to and from the gateway to the continent. Brush locomotives are now very much part of the everyday scene on British railways. From London's great stations go out the named expresses. The Fenman, the Broadsman, the Pullmans, the Scandinavian. 
making daily return journeys throughout the eastern counties. Five times daily, the Cambridge Buffet Express speeds over Great Northern Lines behind brush locomotives. Every evening, the Lee Valley Enterprise, serving light industry in North London, hauls freights to the Midlands. Since the delivery of the first order of these locomotives in 1957, their performance and ability has been recognised by drivers and maintenance men alike. Drivers praise their ease of operation and smooth riding qualities. Maintenance men appreciate their accessibility and simplicity of servicing. Whether for mainline passenger service, heavy freight or shunting duties, the accent is on efficiency, reliability and accessibility of equipment. Today, Brush has the facilities and experience to design and supply locomotives meeting the requirements of users all over the world.